the psychedelic experience is as central to understanding your humanness as having sex or having a child or having responsibilities or, or having hopes and dreams and yet it is illegal we are somehow told we are infantilized we're told you know you can wander around within the sanctioned playpen of ordinary consciousness and we have some intoxicants over here if you want to mess yourself up we've got some scotch here and some tobacco and red meat and some sugar and a little TV and so forth and so on uh, but but these boundary dissolving uh, hallucinogens that give you a sense of unity with your fellow man and nature are somehow forbidden. This is an outrage. It's a sign of cultural immaturity and the fact that we tolerate it is a sign that we are uh, living in a society as oppressed as any society in the past. a short question but I think it's really important we're not my thing is not about my opinion or what I saw in Africa or anything like that this is get it straight this is about an experience not my experience your experience it's about an experience which you have like getting laid or like going to Africa you must do the experience otherwise it's, it's just whistling past the graveyard. And we're not talking about something like being born again or meeting the flying saucers or something like that where good works and prayer are the method. No, if you take a sufficient dose of an active compound, it will deliver itself to you on the money. If it doesn't work, take more. Nobody is in a position to dismiss this just because it didn't work for them on one or two tries. This is an art. It's an art. It's something you coax into existence. I mean, you have to learn to make love. You have to learn to speak English. Anything worth doing is an art that is acquired. This is part of our birthright, perhaps the most important part of our birthright. These substances will deliver. It is the confoundment of, of psychology and science generally. And that's why it's so touchy for cultural institutions. But you are not a cultural institution. You are a free and independent human being. And these things have your name written on them in big gold letters. Yes, here. Well, clairvoyance, uh, all forms of paranormal activity, I think, are part of a, a 5% leakage around normal culturally sanctioned uh, brain function. Uh, if you read Stan Groff's books about LSD, which is one case history after another, virtually every paranormal phenomenon ever catalogued has occurred under the influence of LSD. Uh, seeing things at a distance, recovering past lives where then you could actually check the data and it happened, uh, knowledge of things going on at a distance. Uh, I think that we are caged by our cultural programming in, and that this is the most powerful imprisoning factor in our lives that if we could train ourselves simply to remember our dreams, psychedelics would become obsolete. If we could train ourselves simply to pay attention to our ordinary states of consciousness as we live through our days and nights, uh, culture is a mass hallucination. And when you step outside the mass hallucination, you see it for worth. Language is partially the key here. We cannot move into a reality that we cannot describe. If we can't describe a world, we can't be there. And so the interesting place to be is at the cutting edge of language. 
And it's interesting that the legacy of the 1960s is a legacy of language evolution. I mean, concepts like ego trip, vibe, uh, bummer, uh, so forth and so on. I mean, we sneer at these concepts, but there was no word for these things before. Once there is a word, then that word is like a stepping stone out into the fog. And as long as we let the establishment set the language agenda, we will be imprisoned in the tiny, rather pedestrian world of consumerism and schlocko values that the establishment has prepared for us. So the way I think of these psychedelics, or a different way, is that they're catalysts for the imagination. Catalysts to say what has never been said, to see what has never been seen, to draw, paint, sing, sculpt, dance, and act what has never before been done, to push the envelope of creativity and language. And what's really important is, I call it the felt presence of direct experience which is a fancy term, which just simply means we have to stop consuming our culture. We have to create culture. Don't watch TV. Don't read magazines. Don't even listen to NPR. Create your own road show. The, the, the nexus of space and time where you are now is the most immediate sector of your universe. And if you're worrying about Michael Jackson or Bill Clinton or somebody else, then you are disempowered. You're giving it all away to icons. Icons which are maintained by an electronic media so that, you know, you, you want to dress like X or have lips like Y or something. This is, this is shit-brained, this kind of thinking. That is all cultural diversion. And what is real is you and your friends and your uh, associations, your highs, your orgasms, your hopes, your plans, your fears. And we're, we're told, no, we're unimportant, we're peripheral, get a degree, get a job, get a this, get a that, and then you're a player. You don't even want to play in that game. You want to reclaim your mind and get it out of the hands of the cultural engineers who want to turn you into a half-baked moron consuming all this trash that's being manufactured out of the bones of a dying world. Where is that at? Yeah, over here. Religion is simply the, uh, the word we use to describe our intuition that there is something outside the realm of culture and, uh, and uh, the, the three-dimensional surfaces of things, that there is a hidden dimension to reality. Call it a plan, a purpose, a loving God, uh, a, a cosmos instead of a chaos. And psychedelics, I believe, reveal a greater order than the order of the human world. This is why the way I do them is either in darkness, which means surrounded by the body, my body, which is part of nature, or in nature itself in the mountains, at the beach, in the jungle. Because what we are lacking existentially is any sense of order, meaning, and beauty in the world because the society we're living in has no order or beauty or meaning. It's just a scam and a rat race. But if you take the psychedelics in these contexts where the culture and its artifacts are suppressed, then you connect up to the greater whole. I, the question of God, meaning in Milton's phrase, the God who hung the stars like lamps in heaven, I don't think psychedelics can address that definitively. But there is another God, a goddess, the goddess of biology 
the goddess of the coherent animal-human world, the world of the oceans, the atmosphere, and the planet. In short, our world, the world we were born into, that we evolved into, and that we came from. That world, the psychedelics want to connect us up to, because our individuality as people and as a species is an illusion of bad language that the psychedelics dissolve into the greater feeling of connectedness that underlies uh, our being here. And to my mind, that's the religious impulse. It's not a laundry list of moral do's and don'ts or a set of dietary prescriptions or practices. It's a sense of connectedness responsibility for your fellow human beings and for the earth you're walking around on and because these psychedelics come out of that plant vegetable matrix they are the way back into it